Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1990 Chevy Lumina Euro. Up front is a 3.1 liter V6 and down below is a four speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Lumina for a couple of reasons. First of all, I've really been on an old nostalgic GM roll this year alone. And so I'm excited to add to my video collection a Lumina, but also this is a very well preserved vehicle. This was actually sold in the Lambrett auction out in Nebraska, it was this giant Chevy auction. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it was a giant Chevy auction. This was one of those vehicles sold in it. It's very well preserved. It's a very clean example. I'm excited to share that with you today. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, zachpradle.com, where you can buy stickers and other merchandise when it becomes available. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form, and you get a video of your car just like this one. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But real quick, I do want to talk about why this is the Euro. So I was unaware, but this is actually just a trim level. The Euro trim level was just a mid-range trim. It wasn't anything too special, although you do get a Euro badge on the doors and a Euro badge on the dash, and you do get some nicer options here and there. It wasn't anything crazy. So before anyone thinks, oh, this car was imported from Europe to the United States, no, this is just the trim level of Euro. But let's get back to that 3.1 liter V6 under the hood. Well, the 3100 was used in a bunch of vehicles from GM at the time, and for a sedan application, it's fine. They also put these in the Oldsmobile silhouette, and that's where things start to get a little dicey because those are so heavy. This car is lighter than a van, so the 3100 does work. And they even put a four cylinder in some of these for the Luminas. The very base models and the fleet models did get a little four cylinder known as the Iron Duke. Like I said, paired to it four speed auto, doing the job. It's over 30 years old and still functioning properly today. And that's all I can ask for from it. Last but not least, the Lumina is front wheel drive, but let's talk about how it drives. It's nice. You know, it actually sort of has a Buick style floatiness to it. Now it's not quite at the level of Buick, but it does still float and the seats are still cushy. It's a pleasurable driving experience. It's not too harsh. It's not super soft either. I think it's a really healthy middle ground. With all that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a bunch of gauges that are actually separated from one another. So on the far left, I have my coolant temperature and oil pressure. Then I have my speedometer, tachometer off to the right with a little yellow and red line, fuel gauge, what gear I'm in, and odometer to the far right. Very linear, wide, single layer gauges, kind of interesting. The steering wheel just has the Chevy logo on it and looks very, very identical to the Chevy Cavalier steering wheel of a similar vintage. I'm sure a part's been part, but it feels nice in my hands. The interesting thing is that the thumb grips or the spokes are so low down on the steering wheel, which really gives you a cruiser kind of feel. It doesn't have pistol grips like some other cars. Off to the left, I do have my headlight and parking switch buttons, as well as a climate control vent. And then moving out of the door, I have manual mirrors up top, power locks and power windows, which are sort of on this like downward curve. So they put this text plate here that says down window up. So it like points up is down and down is actually up. Kind of interesting to get used to at first, but obviously not the end of the world. Moving into the center, I have a very small climate control little square. I have fan speed off to the left, which what I really like is when you up the fan speed, little lights pop up. I really like that look. And they are clean, concise, and very easy to see everything that I would need. Now, I don't get auto climate or dual zone or anything like that, but for 1990, pretty good. Then I have that Euro badge off to the right that I mentioned, and I have more climate control vents, and then I have the radio. Now, this radio is a CD player radio. The owner, Spencer, put this radio in because it had some cheap aftermarket one. Neither of us are sure if the Lumina was ever offered with a CD player in 1990. So this isn't the original radio, but it works perfectly, and it's from the same era, so take that as you will. Then I do get a little fold out ashtray and cigarette lighter, meaning I actually don't get any cup holders here in the Lumina. So unfortunately, by default, the 1990 Chevy Lumina fails the big friggin' bottle test. 
However, moving on to the seats, I am happy to say we do have a little bench seat, which is lovely, and they are burgundy with the rest of this interior, this red burgundy. Love it. Very, very 90s and 80s. Love the look of this. Love the feel of it. I think it is absolutely fantastic. The seats are very, very comfortable. GM knew what they were doing back in the 80s and 90s, and it's very clear here. I love these seats. If I was moving into a new apartment and there was one of these for sale, I might just use this as my couch for a little while. Love that about GMs. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 1990 Chevy Lumina and a couple of things to note. First of all, knee room, fantastic. Now, the seats moved up a tiny bit, but not that much. I was driving it comfortably like this, so this is really fantastic. Headroom, great. Knee room, great. Love it. The redness carries on back here. As you can see, the whole frame is like red. I don't get any really crazy features back here. I do have ashtrays in the doors because 1990s. And I do actually get shoulder belts, which is nice for the 90s. That's kind of a nice little perk too. Other than that, nothing really too interesting to report besides the fact I'd get the same power window switches as up there. So they're kind of upside down or whatever. But let's hop around the very back. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so around the back of the Chevy Lumina, again, this is the the era where GM gave you two keys, ignition and for the body. So put it right in here, pop it right up and you get a giant, and I mean giant trunk. You could happily easily sleep in here and have no problems in the whole entire world. Absolutely love that about American cars. I don't get any crazy features in here, no you know, jib jabs or the other, um, but it is a very large American trunk and that's what we love to see. Now we gotta talk about the looks and I really love the look of this. It's very iconic 90s GM and you guys know I'm a big fan. I don't think it would win really any design contest, but as I've stated before, this is a little bit before my era, but it does sort of fall into that mac and cheese styling where it is kind of blobby and not really poignant. However, like the dish mac and cheese, I grew up on it and I love it for that. It gives me nostalgia. I remember growing up in the late 90s, early 2000s and seeing these around quite frequently. Well, it's not the case anymore. But now that we've done the walk around and talked about it a little bit, something I want to point out is on the hubcaps, it says Chevrolet Motor Division. I uh, didn't know that there was really anything else. Kind of a uh, weird distinction, but it's on here nevertheless. But now let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think finally driving the Chevy Lumina? Well, 1990 was actually the first year of the Lumina, which is kind of interesting. The Lumina is somewhat an elusive vehicle because it was here and then it wasn't. And honestly, I don't think it really made much of an impact when it was here. Not to mention with GM, there was the Beretta, the Lumina, the Monte Carlo, Corsica. I mean, all of these were kind of interchangeable. Like this, for instance, you could get a Lumina with a Z34 package. And then there's the Beretta Z26 and the Cavalier Z24. I think this sort of fell victim to GM again at the time doing what they do best and cannibalizing themselves. GM is this huge juggernaut of a company. They've been around for over a hundred years and time and time again, they grow and grow and grow and make more divisions and more divisions and more divisions until they get to the point where there's so few defining factors between these different divisions that they just start stealing sales away from one another. They get too specific. It starts to become a burden of choice. Around the 1920s, GM not only had Chevy, Buick, Cadillac, Oldsmobile, Pontiac, but they also had Oakland. And so Pontiac was supposed to be the entry level. And then there was Chevy and then Oldsmobile and then Buick and then Cadillac. There was this hierarchy of cars. Well, if every one of those brands makes three sedans, which at one point they all did, how many choices is that? There's so many choices. And that's only factoring in one parent company. Then you have to start thinking about Ford. Then you have to start thinking about Chrysler. And considering all of that, well, your head starts to explode a little. And so what I'm getting at is that this car is great. It's a lovely car. It's a lovely driving experience and driving one like this is so unique, but I don't think that this car sticks out in a lot of people's memories just because of its 
mundaneness. I'm sure someone watching this grew up with one and has very fond memories. This is probably involved in a core memory of yours, and I love that, but I'm not sure the rest of the population really remembers the Lumina. Well, today is the Lumina's day in the sun. Enjoy this car, live it up, soak it in. You probably won't see one again anytime soon, especially not one this clean. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Spencer for letting me take out his 1990 Chevy Lumina Euro. It's such an interesting piece of history that it's completely forgotten. Spencer is absolutely awesome. I'm reviewing a couple of his vehicles today, which is just so exciting. He collects GMs. And if you are into front wheel drive GM vehicles, please go check out his Facebook group. It's over 13,000 people strong. One of the nicest, friendliest groups I've ever been a part of. And I highly, highly recommend it if these are vehicles that you like. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. Thank you.